Hurricane.com is a website that allows you to create data sets for information that you would want to give to your students. As you can see here, there are numerous different types of data sets for all kinds of content areas and grade levels. You can log in to sugarcane.com using your Valley View created Google account information. Once you're in, you can search for sets by typing in the subject or content that you want to, to see. You could also look for sets that are pre-made by picking the categories that they've got here. If we wanted to look for some information about biology and cell organelles, we could click on this and then it tells us the various types of games that have been created for this set of information. You can see that this is fairly detailed as far as the information. It's got one, two, three, four, five different pieces of information that go with one part. You can have as few as two if you would like, where you just had, say, math facts, and it could say seven and seven times one. Or you can make them very detailed like this. If you find a set that you like and would like to use for yourself, you can click copy and edit. You might want to change the name a little bit to reflect your class or a certain class period or a chapter that you're working on. Then you can see the information that's already been put in. You can change the names of each column. You could change the picture that goes into the column if you would like. You can change the text that is in the column. And you can add another column with facts if you would like. If it doesn't have enough items for you, right now if you clicked add, it would add 10 more items. If you only wanted to add one at a time, you could change that. And then when you clicked add, it would add one more item. If you select a certain row and then scroll up, you can delete that row. You can also add rows just by clicking this. If you click on my dashboard, you can see your data sets and any games that you've created. You can also see recent sets that you have looked at or things that you've worked with. So if I go to my data sets, you can look at your finished sets to see what games you've created or to make another game from that set. Let's go ahead and look at the games that are available. There are a few different categories. There are matching games, associating games, typing games, ordering games, and categorizing games. There's also a spelling game. You can see that they are broken down into three groups, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Not every type of game has all three levels. The associating games are just beginner and intermediate. You can click on each game to explore how to create them. From your dashboard, if you want to create a new set, you could click create a new data set, or you could click the create button there. By default, you are given two columns to work with.
You can put whatever you want in these, but they do need a title. If you wanted to add another column, you can do that. You can also make these columns smaller or bigger. And when you do that, you see you can add another fact. You can add many columns worth of data. And then if you want to add an image, you can search for an image. and insert that into the box. Or you can upload images from your computer. You can drag and drop images or you can browse folders. Once you are done adding all of your information, remember all the boxes need to be filled. This one has eight, and so all of those would need to be filled. You would click Save, and it will let you know if you've made a mistake somewhere. That's always nice. If you don't want eight, again, you can remove those, and it highlights the very next row. So if you wanted to keep undoing the rows or deleting rows, now you've got five. If you wanted to add more, you can just click the Add row button. If you click on My Games, which you can do from this drop-down portion, or if you are on your dashboard, you can click on My Games. It breaks them down by game category. So in my grid matching area, I've got four games. I've got some concentration games, some choose the match, games. You can open those, make any edits. You can also, if you check the leaderboard, looks like I did okay for my seven facts. Your students don't have to be logged in to play a game, but if they are logged in, it shows you their username and an avatar if they've got a picture associated with their account and it shows you their time and score. It will give you instructions for each game. It allows you to start the game over. It allows them to play in practice or challenge mode and it allows them to quit at any time. With this game, you're removing the incorrect match. You just drag this down to the garbage area and then click Next. It's really great to have a site that will make all of these different types of games for you. Once you've made a game, you need to know how to get it to your students. By clicking on the Share button, you've got three options. You can copy and paste this link you can also assign it to your students using Google Classroom. And a really nice feature of this is that in Google Classroom, remember, you can differentiate. You don't have to hand it out to every student. If you had a beginner level game, you could hand it out to certain students. You could do the same with intermediate or advanced level games. You could also email it to students. That's probably the least recommended way to do it. I would say Google Classroom or the link would be the best way to share this with your students. If you ever need to delete a game, you would just go down to this section and click Delete. If you need to delete a data set, you would just click on the name of the set and then click Delete and Confirm and that's how you delete a set.